What's going on YouTube? This is JabberTech. We finally got it. Android Pie One UI update for the Samsung Tab S4. Now this one is the Wi-Fi US edition that I have here, the 64 gigabyte. It is rolling out to the LTE models and other models around the world. So if you haven't done so, go to your update center and check if you have it. It might actually be waiting for you. Sometimes the push doesn't always get through. So this is just a quick overview of what's new in the one UI Android Pie update for the Tab S4 and a few recommendations that I think you should do. Let's get into this video review of the Tab S4 running Android Pie. So this is it guys, this is a brand new update, the One UI Android Pie update for the Tab S4. Now this is the 64 US edition Wi-Fi only. It's rolling out to every other edition around the world. So go hit that update button and see if it's waiting for you. But it's a nice refresh, it's a nice overall feel, it's a more modernized feel and it looks just like what we had on Samsung phones as of late. The new phones have this. So it's a nice feel. It's something that's gonna be a little bit familiar to you guys if you do have a Samsung phone. And if you don't, it's still pretty easy to get through. But just taking a look at the toggles, you see we have a new kids home and we have the new darkness toggle. That'll basically change everything to the dark mode. I'll show you that in a second, but you can see that the refresh kind of changes everything here. And just take a look. It's just a cleaner, cleaner interface in my opinion. Let me show you what this looks like in portrait because that's really where One UI kind of stands out. They want it to be super friendly, especially on phones. They wanted everything to be into reach and it works here. It works very well here with the tablets because you do have this large screen. And looking at the update in portrait mode, you can see that they've done a good job because your thumb can reach pretty much everything here and it's not really that hard to reach it. Whereas before, you'd actually have to reposition your thumb to get to the top settings. So they've really done a refresh and they really made it a little bit more friendly, especially with these larger panels. And that is the case on a tablet tablet of course. So this is what it looks like and it's pretty cool guys. But now what I want to show you is the dark theme and then all you have to do is toggle on that night mode and that can come on automatically if you want but you can see it just changes mostly everything and that's one gripe that I have. Same with the phones guys. It just leaves some aspects white. I'm not too sure what that is, why they've done that but hopefully they will improve this and completely turn 100% everything into the darkness. I kind of hope that happens. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But as you see, everything is dark and this saves you a little bit of battery. So speaking of battery life, I have noticed a little bit of an increase in battery. Now it's nothing super substantial. It's not nothing that I really have to talk about, but it does add a little bit. It adds like half an hour to an hour from what I've seen, but standby time is where this has really improved. I've pretty much left this on standby for a number of hours and it just sips battery life. So Android Pie is definitely doing a better job in standby and when using the tab in active mode, you will see a little bit of improvement, but that might be thanks to the, the tweaks in Android Pie as well as the tweaks in the One UI. And of course, toggling that darkness mode on, that'll give you some battery life improvements as well. So one thing I recommend you guys doing, whether or not you like the dark theme or you don't, I recommend that you go into one feature that nobody's really talking about and it's a feature that I love personally. I've done a video on it so if you want to check it out, I'll leave the link up here and down here. But it's the ability to add your own private DNS. Now I use Adblock's DNS server just because it'll block all the ads from every single app on this tablet. It's a system-wide block whether you're using an application, whether you're just surfing the web. You will not get those pop-ups, you will not get those ads. It blocks about 90%, guys. So that's something to note. You can also use Cloudflare's or you can use Google's. You can also use one provided to you from your VPN if you want. So the ability to have this system-wide is something that I'm really happy about and I'm thankful that Samsung has included it. I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. Let me know what you think down below. Are you using your own private DNS server? But that's one thing I'd recommend you guys doing is go into there and kind of toggle that on or off. Another feature I want to show you guys, and you might like it, you might not, it's this whole new digital well-being thing. That's kind of going around, that's on iOS devices as well, and it kind of just keeps track of your usage. Shows you how long you've been using the app, how long you've been using a tablet, and it's something that I personally don't pay attention, but I know a lot of you will. If you think you're spending too much time on the gram or the book, this will kind of show you and let you know that, hey, you spent six hours today on Facebook. That might not be too healthy, but it shows you your screen on time as well, daily or hourly if you want. It can also show you other things, how many notifications you've received. It'll also show you how many times you've opened the tablet. So I've opened it about 31 times. 
So it's just something that you either like or you don't, guys, but it is in here. So for those of you that want to keep track, that want to kind of limit your usage, this is something to note. Another thing I want to talk about, we now have gestures built in. So if you like gestures instead of buttons, you can switch that around and use it if you want to. So just go into your navigation setting here, go to nav bar, and then you have the option and you can switch around the recents and the back button so you can kind of customize it. And swiping up will basically take you back home so you don't have to press. And if you swipe up on the recents tab, that'll help you out too. Or you can just sort of swipe and scroll along just like so to go from app to app if you want. I just want to show you guys a quick little, I don't know if it's a bug, but it's something pretty interesting. If you go to your recents tab, you can see that all your applications are in landscape. But if you were using an application in portrait, it will not rotate it over when you're in landscape. When you open up the recents tab, just take a look at Plex here. That's still in portrait. Just take a look at my settings. That's still in portrait. And I just want to show you what I mean, guys. So take a look at the podcast app. This is in landscape right now. So if I switch over the tablet and I open up that podcasting app in portrait mode. So let me just do that. Here's the Android Central podcast. And let me close that. If I go back to the recents tab after switching this around to landscape, you're going to see that my recents tab has kept it in memory as a portrait layout. I just think that's kind of interesting, kind of kind of a little bug or kind of a little, I don't know what you'd call it. It does, it fix itself, but it kind of just keeps itself in memory. However you're using the tablet, that's just one little fun thing that I noticed, guys. Nothing else. Now, of course, you have Bixby Home. I haven't even set this up on my tablet. I've never even used it once. I don't think there's anything new in Bixby personally. One last thing I want to show you guys, if you open up your app drawer, it's kind of all redesigned too with the new Squircle thing. So that's pretty cool. I think it's a nice design, but you know me, I'm just going to switch on Nova. I think that's a lot better in my opinion. But if you open up your game launcher here, you see it's a whole new layout. And I actually like this layout personally, guys. You see your installed games right on the left side panel. And then you also see like some marketing, some recommendations on the right side. And if you look in here, right off the bat, recommended games for decks. That means these games are optimized when you use a big screen, when you use your monitor to connect your tablet to. And I like this. This is a nice welcome improvement. It's just a nice layout. And it makes it super easy to find games that you might want to play using decks. So I like the new game launcher layout personally. That's just one thing I wanted to mention, guys, is, is they've done a nice job. They're definitely... Definitely improving this tablet, definitely improving their UI. That's something that a lot of manufacturers are kind of stuck in the past, like LG. They're not really modernizing their look and feel of their updates and giving us something a little bit better. But this has just been a quick overview, guys. A quick look at the One UI update for the Samsung Tab S4. Let me know what you guys think about it. I think it's nice. It's a nice improvement. Brings us to the modern world, the modern era. But I appreciate you guys watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.